please welcome back to the stage NAE President John Anderson. Well, uh, please feel free to finish that dessert because it's really good. And uh, I, I got it down. So, you know, on these things, I usually don't have time to eat dessert. But I saw that one. I decided I was going to finish. We weren't going to start this program until I got through it. So it's very good. Again, let me welcome you to the 2023 Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize presentation. I hope you enjoyed your dinner and the camaraderie around your table. This is a splendid evening to celebrate Fritz uh, Russ and outstanding achievements in bioengineering, and it's a fitting time to hold this celebration during Engineers Week. And the 2023 theme, Creating the Future, is also fitting. Engineering leaders like those with us this evening are actively creating the future in ways that we hope will be as beneficial as the innovations celebrated this evening. I point out that engineers Week is the only event of its kind that honors men and women who work in all engineering disciplines. While as a week-long event, it is also a reminder to celebrate engineers year-round and to honor their commitment to making, making a difference. Engineers Week is a time to celebrate how engineers make a difference in our world, increase public dialogue about the need for engineering, bring engineering to life to young persons, educators, and parents, and encourage young persons from all walks of life to consider an engineering career. To that end, our award recipient, Dr. David Walt, was interviewed yesterday by students attending the Future City Competition at the Hyatt Regency in uh, on Capitol Hill. The Future City Competition is a hands-on, cross-curricular educational program that brings STEM to life for students in grades eight, six through eight. David addressed the students and answered questions about his favorite part of his career, as well as his innovation, its impact, and why bioengineering is important for the future. And he was asked, what does he like to do when he's not doing his research? And uh, he had a pause for a moment, and he says he likes to fish. And the young, the young person kind of looked puzzled there for a minute, and he said, you know, I like to fish even when I don't catch any. So uh, he, they, got a, they got an inside view of a great researcher and scientist and engineer but uh, that who likes to do something outside his work. Thank you, David, for taking the time to share your experiences uh, and insights with the students. They are the future, future citizens, and hopefully future engineers. And thank you to the Discover E leadership, Executive Director Kathy Renzetti and Deputy Executive Director Thea Sayre for sponsorship, sponsoring Future Cities competition and providing opportunity to make bioengineering more visible in an exciting way. Would you please stand in the back, Kathy and Teresa? We owe you a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Tonight we present the prestigious Fritz and Dolores Russ Prize, which honors the creators of some of the most important bioengineering achievements. To begin the presentation, Please welcome Dr. Hugh Sherman, president of Ohio University, who will say a few words about the prize and this year's recipient. Hugh. It's a real honor to be with you tonight. The Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize recognizes outstanding bioengineering achievements in widespread use that improve the human condition. Ohio University is a proud to be a partner in presenting this prestigious award created by Fritz and Dolores Russ. The generosity of the Russ family uh, is truly inspiring. Ohio University is forever grateful for their support and encouragement and advice over these years. I, I hope you all recognize that the Russ gift to Ohio University was the biggest gift ever given to an engineering school in the country. And they have truly transformed our engineering school. And so I'm really excited to see the Russ family members here tonight. I mean, they, you know, I, I, I hope you have pride in Russ and Fritz. I mean, they, they are just, you know, incredibly outstanding people. 
Um, I was sad to learn of the passing of Mildred Crum, who, as John said, played an integral part in, in supporting this award. Tonight, as we gather once again for this esteemed award, I'm thrilled that we are honoring Dr. David Walt. He is the 26th innovator honored with the Russ Prize since 2001. Dr. Walt's work is truly having a profound impact and is improving the human condition. His work in impacting genetic research, how we detect and uh, treat cancer, and even how we grow crops in our fields. Dr. Walt is changing lives for the better, and I'm honored that we are here tonight to recognize him for his truly life-changing work. I, I have to say that it was my pleasure just to meet him at the reception tonight for the first time. I mean, I, I was really impressed with what an incredible, not only you know how outstanding he is as a scientist and engineer, but he is an incredible human being and a really nice person to know. So it's really nice to have him here tonight. Thank you all. <clears throat> thank you, Hugh. Uh, awarding the Russ Prize is an honor, and we thank Fritz and Dolores Russ and Ohio University for this opportunity. The Russ Prize recognizes a bioengineering achievement and widespread global use that improves the human condition. The prize recipient re receives a $500,000 award, commemorative medallion, and hand-scribed certificate. In addition, the recipient will present a lecture in Athens, Ohio, hosted by Ohio University. The 2023 Fritz J. and Dolores H. H. Russ Prize recipient this year is Dr. David R. Walt. <clears throat> David is credited with the pioneering use of microwell arrays for single molecule detection and genetic measurements, an advance that has revolutionized the process of genetic and proteomic analysis. Let me stop here and just say, uh, an interesting statistic I don't, I, is that when the genome was first uh, determined experimentally, it cost $3 billion, the whole project. Today, thanks to Dr. Walt's work, you can get a, a genome determination for $200. So if you want to think of impact, think of that. Think what that can do. This technology has made a profound impact that affects literally millions of people in multiple ways. As noted by the Wies Institute at Harvard University, it is the gold standard for genomic analysis for a wide variety of applications, including screening embryos for genetic effects before in vitro fertilization, studying disease in preserved or frozen tissues, improving crop disease resistance, and identifying individuals' met metabolic profiles to ensure proper drug dosage. Equally important, over the last decade, this technology has greatly reduced the cost of DNA sequencing, as I noted, enab uh, and enabling greater access to diagnosis, treatment, and continued research. I'm proud to point out that David is a member of the National Academy of Engineering. He is also the recipient of numerous national, international, national and international awards and honors, and the list of his titles is equally long and distinguished. David is the Hans-Jörg Wies Professor of Bioinspired Engineering at Harvard Medical School, Professor of Pathology at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, part of the core, fac a core faculty member of the Wies Institute at Harvard University, scientific founder of Illumina, Quantarix, and co-founder of multiple other life sciences startups, including Ultaview, Arbor Biotechnologies, Sherlock Biosciences, Visgen, and Taurus Biosciences. I get tired just reading that list and thinking about how much work you had to do uh, to get there. David received his bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Michigan and his doctorate in chemical biology from Stony Brook University. Uh, well, I stop here and add that though David doesn't have a formal degree in engineering, he is the consummate engineer. In recognition of his development of microwell arrays that greatly advanced the fields of genomic and proteomics, we honor David R. Walt. Congratulations, David. Please join me on the stage.
You know, I always wanted to dress up in a tux and win an Academy Award. Thank you, John, for the kind introduction. And thank you, Steve. Uh, I have many people to thank for this honor. First and foremost, my sincere thanks to Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ for creating this prize, and also to members of the Russ family for in attendance tonight. Thank you, Dr. Sherman, and the Ohio State leadership, uh, Ohio University leadership, I'm sorry, I would not, I'm a Michigan alum, so I would never say Ohio State by mistake, but I'm sorry, so I apologize. Uh, sincerely, I, I sincerely apologize. I, I, I look forward to my visit to your campus. Um, uh, my sincere thanks goes also to the selection committee for their hard work. Uh, I served as a member of the Gordon Prize Committee for uh, uh, several years, just until uh, last year, and, and uh, I know how much work it takes to come to, to a, a decision, so thank you very much. Um, and I also thank uh, the nominators and supporters of my case, um, and I want to uh, acknowledge Grant Ligler, uh, who's here tonight, uh, and who's been a strong supporter of mine for, for many years, for our, almost our entire careers. So thanks for, for being here tonight. <clears throat> I also want to single out uh, Deborah Young, uh, who uh, does a lot of the behind the scenes work for these committees. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Finally, uh, Thanks, a special thanks to my uh, family, uh, Michelle, my wife of 43 years, uh, whose strong support, guidance, and strength have provided me with the ability to achieve the accomplishments that are leading to the recognition that I'm receiving tonight. So I share this prize with you. And thanks to my daughters, Stephanie and Rachel, who put up with their dad's travels and busy schedule as children, and who also have been uh, two of my strongest supporters. Thank you, guys. As you heard, bioengineering was not part of my educational background. I was trained as a chemist and a chemical biologist. But over my career, technology and engineering have become the cornerstones of my efforts. As a kid, I thought about engineering. I thought about engineering because I, I, I was exposed to, at the time back in the 60s, large construction projects. Civil engineering was sort of a big thing in those days, building cities, building roads. Um, and one of my cousins was a civil engineer. And a neighbor of mine, was an engineer who was involved in some of these large construction projects, uh, and that biased my perception. But of course, we all know engineering is much more. It's mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, aerospace engineering, and more. Recently, recently, like in the last three or four decades, bioengineering has actually become important. When my lab first developed what I'm being recognized here tonight for, microwell arrays, at first, uh, as Fran and I were talking uh, at dinner, it was a serendipitous discovery. Uh, it, it was without a clear use, and in fact, it was something that we were not trying to do. Uh, and, and I ignored that discovery because what we were trying to do was actually quite different. We were trying to make uh, something that was the reverse of microwell arrays. And I, but I should have paid attention at the time because the microwell arrays that we created at the time were five billion times smaller than what at the time were being uh, touted as microwell arrays. And sort of those, those numbers that you heard from John er, earlier tonight about going from $3 billion to $200, that should have sort of awakened me when I saw that many zeros of uh, difference between what was available at the time. But once I figured out what they were good for, 
which was about a year later, it set me on a path to translate the discovery into the private sector by founding a company called Illumina. And this is where I really learned about engineering, how engineers could take a scientific discovery and scale it so that it wasn't a one-off laboratory experiment or just a demonstration, but it was something that worked every single time. And it could be fabricated by the millions. This is what engineers do. This scaling required engineers from many fields. It required electrical and optical engineers to build the optics and electronics that could even visualize these microwell arrays. It required mechanical engineers who built the pumps and fluidic systems that could deliver the chemical reagents to these arrays. And it required mechanical engineers who dealt with the mixing and heat transfer. It also required bioengineers who developed and evolved new enzymes that made the biochemistry that we had developed originally much more efficient so that it worked faster and it worked and it was able to scale. It was a true team effort and it, we, what, what the engineers did is they built a system that worked and delivered consistent results every day with few failures. That's what engineers do. Bioengineering in particular parallels biology. It operates at the micro and nanometer scale. So for those of you who aren't scientists or engineers, how small is a mic micrometer? A, a human hair, within a human hair, that's 100 micrometers. That's how small it is. It's 100,000 nanometers. That's, a, that's the scale that we work with these days. So the micro scale on the biology side, think about cells. The nanometer sale, scale, think about organelles, these little uh, systems within cells that work. Uh, some of you have heard of mitochondria, the en energy uh, engines of the cell. But biology, in addition to operating that really, at that really small scale of cells and organelles, also scales extremely large. Whales, the redwoods of California, and entire ecosystems all of which are comprised of these very tiny cells that operate at the micro and the nanoscale. Similarly, bioengineering operates at the scale of these microwells and the nanowells that were discovered in my laboratory. But those are incorporated into large medical systems. And bioengineering develops large systems such as MRI machines surgical robots, similar to the way that biology works, micro scale to macro scale. The key to bioengineering is that these systems are designed for purpose. They address unmet needs. This is what engineers do. When we first launched Illumina, we made instruments and consumables that could carry out sophisticated genetic analysis at the touch of a button. We provided the research community with the ability to gather genetic data at an unprecedented scale. You heard, Human Genome Today, $200 machine, instrument, bench top, it can, it can do about 100 human genomes in 24 hours. The Human Genome Project took 13 years thousands of people. Little did we know that eventually the discoveries that were made using the technology would be used to diagnose diseases such as cancer, and it would also be used to enable couples whose family had a history of genetic disease undergo in vitro fertilization that was able to select from a single cell in a embryo that was done in a test tube, the, the embryo that was, did not contain the mutation that was responsible for that genetic disease. 
what an incredible feeling it was when I learned about the first patient who benefited from a discovery that could be traced back to my laboratory. It's like no feeling in the world. Even if our initial discovery was a small contribution among many that led to its development and use. To me, this is the message we need to convey to the next generation. As you heard, yesterday, I attended the Future City competition where I was able to address middle school, middle school students. The event, as John mentioned, is appropriately held during Engineers Week. I've learned over my four decades as an educator that young people have one goal. When I would teach a freshman class, the one thing that students want to do, they want to change the world. They want to make a difference. And they want to change the world for the better. And the best way to inspire these future potential engineers and scientists is to make them understand that STEM is the path to affecting change. Whether it's to benefit patients, to help clean up our environment, to reverse the damage to our climate, or to create better and more sustainable foods, to produce clean energy, design or build more efficient vehicles for transportation, the list goes on. We, but this is the message these students need to hear. We need to give young people from all backgrounds the exposure to what one can accomplish in science and engineering and provide them with a vision of the impact that they can make. And we need to enable each and every one of them whatever their background or economic status to achieve their utmost potential. The next Einstein, go see his statue out there. Edison, George Washington Carver, Francis Arnold, Jennifer Doudna, is more likely to come from a person from a background traditionally underrepresented in science and engineering. I'm hoping one day some of the students I spoke with yesterday, or students like them, will be up here receiving a future Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize, or recognition for another engineering or science innovation. My sincere thanks to all of you for coming to this celebration and celebrating with me. It's truly an honor to be a recipient of this incredible prize. Thank you. Thank you, David, for being an inspiration to us all. I want to add something else about David. Uh, he, we have a saying that the NAE is about service. It's not just an honor, honor society. Excuse me. And uh, I've, we've called on him in the last three years, many, many I have a glass beside, many, many, many times to, um, to do things in service of his country as a member of the National Engineering, and he's always said yes. Now maybe he doesn't know the word no, but whatever it is, he's always come through for us. And yesterday was a good example of that because he was with these young people all afternoon and into the evening. So I thank you for not only your achievements, but your model or the role model in service of the country and your volunteer work. It's so great to work with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to thank also again the Russ family and Ohio University for their continued efforts to promote the important role of bioengineering in our world. I hope everyone has enjoyed honoring our distinguished awardee this evening for his remarkable bioengineering achievement. 
I know I have. It's been a great honor, and I thank everyone who participated this evening. I hope you enjoyed the proceedings, the good conversation, the great food. And uh, before I close, I want to thank Deborah Young and her staff for an outstanding <laughs> effort. <clears throat> So good night, safe travels, stay positive.